I want to tell you that it's church policy that unusual favors are a big no-no. It's considered a crime. You not only can be comment, you can be, there was a guy called Peter Cook. You may know him from Gold or whatever. Peter Cook got some presents from a former mission holder called Martin Samuels. I wonder what happened to Martin Samuels. He was he, prominent. I, I wondered what happened to him. He was on the West Coast, wasn't he? Yes, Bay Area. And he got some big um, wins with an auditor called Peter Cook, who he then gave a stereo system to. And it was found out that Peter Cook took the stereo system from Martin Samuels. <gasps> and mouth Vesuvius exploded. Peter Cook was sent to the RPF's RPF for accepting a stereo system from his counselor. Now, and Peter Cook was crushed. I, I think he's long gone. He fled from... Oh, no, he's out. He lives up in uh, uh, Vermont with his wife. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a, I know Peter well. Oh, you know and Peter? Absolutely, yeah. And he's he was a good auditor. Yeah. He, Boy, yeah. was he crushed on this. Oh. Uh, it was considered criminal. However... David Miscavige would get personal investments done by the Feshbeck brothers to make his money make more money. Did you know that the Feshbecks uh, did investments from Miscavige? Yep, I, I heard that. And I also heard that they were not allowed for him to lose money on any investment. Right. right. Now, I just heard that. I don't know if that's true. I have a tendency to believe if the Feshbecks were doing it, they were not going to tell COB, oh, by the way, you just lost $5,000. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. But this is this is the hypocrisy. What's, goose, what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. It's yeah. like uh, if you're a Sea Org member and you take an unusual favor, you can be crucified, slaughtered. But David Miscavige will shower unusual favors onto Tom Cruise. Look at Tom Cruise. He has a permanent suite at St. Hill. Yeah. Do you know anything about that luxury suite at St. Hill Manor? In well, I, I know that there is a luxury suite that was built that David uses when he goes there. And I'm sure if Tom's in town, that's the same one he's using. And you have a staff of people waiting on you. I'm mm -hmm. sure, you know, if you want breakfast in bed or whatever you want, you just mention it and you're going to get it. Yeah. And the, the manor is has been redone, and it, it is beautiful inside. I got to tell you, yeah, it, it is very luxurious looking. Yeah. I I don't. Yeah. For some reason, I I don't say that that's wrong. Except the fact is, that's being provided with tax free money. Yeah. That's what's wrong with it. It it isn't bad to treat your friend to something, but when you're doing it with people who are working for a pittance their labor they're working for pennies an hour it's been redecorated with tax-free money and you get it that that's what's wrong with it yeah yeah it yeah well look at john brousseau he had the ability to drive on and off the base at any time yeah where if you try to go to walmart down the road by about two miles, you couldn't do that. Yeah. If you walked up to the gate, pressed the button, they'd let him go. Do you know why? He was doing he things for Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise's personal real estate, both yeah. at Telluride, that ski resort area, Telluride, and in Oregon. And it was known at the base that John Rousseau was doing his contractor work to pimp up. Oh, Tom Cruise's, did you see the pictures of the hangar that John Rousseau posted, that John Rousseau had? I think I saw them one time in the Cine Castle, but I couldn't make out what it was. It looked like it was a stainless steel hangar. Is that the one we're talking about? Yeah. This was just a skeleton, so maybe... Well, no, was, I'll no, send them to you. I wish I had printed them off. Maybe on another show I can show them. But anyway, 
Tom Cruise literally, other than the backstabbing and laughing at his sexual withholds, which Miss Cavage reportedly did nightly, drinking scotch and revealing Tom's secrets. That was a... <laughs> yeah. But other than that, Tom is truly... People consider it an honor to be a slave to him. The I know. mentality is, I'm serving God. I'm serving an almighty. They don't consider it slave labor. And they don't consider that they're kissing ass and bowing like a toad. They consider this the greatest honor that they can serve a movie star. Yeah. So, Ron, no matter how many revelations, no matter how many aftermath shows, no matter how many podcasts and hundreds of thousands of forums and sites giving the darker side of Scientology, Tom Cruise is simply see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. He won't. And movie after movie. Yeah. Going clear, my Scientology. There's documentary after documentary. Tom Cruise will have none of it. Right? No. He is going to encourage people to come into a cult where they will be destroyed if they become, if they query and become dissident and criticize any part of it. Some people have been destroyed just by giving likes to Mike Rinder's blog. They gave a like, or they have a friendship on Facebook and their family was disconnected from them as orchestrated by the cult. What do you make of that? Can, it, can you think of any cult, religion, church that would take away your family and have them shun you? Jehovah's Witness call it di disfellowshipping. Scientology calls it disconnection. You give yeah. someone a like or you friend someone and you lose family? Give me some comment on that. What's there to comment? My two daughters, their children, their children's children. I've never met any of those great grandchildren. As a matter of fact, I don't even know how many I have. I still have my son, Ronnie. I have my granddaughter, Jenna, and her husband and their two little children. But the rest of my family's taken away. It, it's just, it's a horrible experience. I got to tell you, it's terrible. And, uh, it's accepted as scripture, like because L. Ron Hubbard wrote it, what he writes, the church called scripture. Yeah. This is terrible. At best, you lose your family and you're right. How could you not know that this is going on if you're Tom Cruise? Is it possible? I don't think so. I do not think so. I think he knows it. And it's justified in his mind as to why it's okay to still do this. It might be like, well, if they hadn't said that, they wouldn't be disconnected. And that's the reason. And it's the greatest good for the greatest number. That type of justification. And there's well, no way to just. He's already been educated. It's just SPs. That's all. It's just SPs quacking. They're just suppressive person. They're antisocial. Yeah. And they're just attacking us. And his paradigm, his experience, has been treated with benevolence, generosity, yeah. just unicorns and ice cream, snap your fingers. People are not allowed to, people have to call him Mr. Cruz, right? I know, yeah. Sea Org, sea Org members have to call him Mr. Cruz. Mm -hmm. And in other words, these people, like me, like you, if we met him, we'd have to say Mr. Cruz, we couldn't say Tom. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's just a, a bad situation. So mention, since it's very strict policy not to have unusual favors, Tom Cruise's four hundred thousand dollar birthday party on on free wings. Were you playing in the band for Tom's birthday party? I was leading the band for that. Oh, I'm I'm on the stage, and 
if you were to see a, a video of it, there I am, I'm playing. Yeah. And uh, I, I played the whole show. And it was like something you never saw before. He came on the stage and danced. He sang uh, that old rock and roll and yeah. just got joined in and everything. But that was, <laughs> I had a caller, I had a caller, a drummer who we sent back to LA, uh, Tommy Breckline. And I caught him at the airport on his cell phone. I says, Tommy, here's a flight. You got to come back. He says, Ronnie, you got to be kidding me. I says, no, you got to come back right now. Mm. He's such a good friend. He just said, okay, I'll explain when you get back. But that thing, money spent on that, there was no objection. You opened up a spigot and money ran out. No big deal. I know that they, Tom liked a certain kind of sushi, Japanese sushi. And the whole restaurant in Santa Monica was the center. <laughs> yeah. So 400, you see, they can spend 400,000 on a movie star. It's tax-free money. It's IRS tax-free money. Yeah, and by the way, that figure, 400,000, Mark Headley knows about that because he yes. was an executive at Gold. So he had his finger right on that money. So that's how come you can yes. say that with, with goddamn so, certainty. Yeah, it was in the book, Blown for Good. So... Uh, the two huge favors that completely stand out, God knows how many personal favors here and there, but pimping to find a sexual partner for Tom as Vanity Fair. <laughs> You're a top-notch movie star and you need somebody else to find a girlfriend for you. Is there something wrong with that picture or why? But what other cult, religion, or church uses a movie star to show for them? Yeah. I know Madonna dabbled in something called Kabbalah, but I can't remember. Kabbalah is some... It's, it's, a, it, well, it's a Jewish thing. It's a, yes. a part of yes. the Jewish religion. And she yeah. dabbled in it a little bit. It was, oh, Madonna's... But, and then there was this Richard... Uh, who is Buddhist and he- Richard Gare? Richard Gare, yes. Yeah. And he endorsed the Dalai Lama. But not, these are a minuscule endorsement yeah. compared to the way Tom Cruise, the word is synonymous with Scientology. Yeah, it is. And David Miscavige made it that way. Yeah. Absolutely made it that way. And there's many a person in the Latin American countries that go, well, Tom Cruise is a member, gotta have some validity, right? Yeah. So, uh, so poor Tom, how he's been used and how his image is damaged. Well, it sure is. It, <laughs> damage, well, damaged image. I think you've made your point. I don't know how long we've been on, Ron, but um, I think that what triggered this was the unbelievable blimps in media that Tom went to London for three days and couldn't stay away from St. He, he'd go there every likes, night to sleep. Maybe he likes the adulation of Sea Org members, the salute, the... Mr. Cruz, the, remember that I'm going to end with this very famous, world famous statement that Tom Cruise allegedly made, which can easily be found on the internet. This is the famous sentence. First, there is L. Ron Hubbard. Second, there is C Chairman of the Board, David Miscavige. And then there is me. That's Tom. the sentence that lead people to write. People write all that. Will Will Tom Cruise take over Scientology when, at some point, that's because he's positioning himself after Hubbard and Miscavige. There is Cruise. Wow. You You haven't heard that sentence before. 
You know, I've heard, three, I've heard of it. I haven't heard that exact explanation. That though. exact sentence I gave you. And then wow. there is me. Just go to Google, anyone listening. Go to Google, put in Tom Cruise, and then there is me. I, I believe, I'll tell you what I heard when he was telling this to somebody. Uh, it, it could have been um, that girl that he was dating for a while. Penelope that, Cruz? No, not Penelope Cruz. Uh, who was the one they arranged on the, the dating thing? Oh, no, I, no, Nas. Nas the, yeah, I, I couldn't think of her name, yeah. Nazi. Now, I heard this, and I don't even know who told it to me, but I heard it, and I'm not making this up, that he said to her, there's L. Ron Hubbard, there's David Miscavige, and then there's me. That's the one I heard. Yes. I think it came from Nas. I think that's what he told her. Okay. And she shared. Mm -hmm. But it gives you the mindset of Tom Cruise. Yeah. It gives you the mindset. He has swallowed all this so much that he looks in his body and finds an attached Thetan, a body Thetan, a spirit. And he exorcises the spirit attached to his body and does the Scientology procedure of exorcism. This is how much Tom Cruise is deeply into the Scientology kind right. of mindset. That bears pondering about. Oh boy, doesn't it ever. Doesn't it ever. Karen, uh, what's the lesson we could say about this? Yeah. I think the lesson is now, I want your feedback, and I want you to go back and forth. Ah, uh, but if it's a good lesson, I may, that's it. I'm not saying anything. So <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> the human mind has the ability to swallow the most unbelievable, outrageous fact, even when the evidence against it is right under their nose. To hell with science, religion, pol politics, anything can supersede any factual data because the human mind will swallow it in spite of contrary facts. Isn't that the lesson we get from Don? I, I, I'll no tell you. What the internet says, no matter what stories heartbreaking stories no matter what yeah he will believe because miscavige has educated and made him swallow it all and i'll just add one little thing but i'm not going to change what you just said because that is the absolute truth and after he said a lot and he will justify why he still believes in false things or will, will justify why what they're presenting to him is not going to change his mind. It's justified. Mm. Does that make any sense to you? In yeah. other words, you they have this belief you're presenting irrefutable facts that are to the contrary, and yeah. it doesn't change his mind because what he has in his mind is justified as being this it. It can't be any different. I wonder what the justifications are precisely and exactly. I wonder the justification is they've been so kind to me. I don't well, know if they have a dark side. Now you go. Now now you're talking, all right? Like, uh, how could this be wrong when I've been treated so nice? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. I, I don't think it was bad me chipping in that after all. I, I was going to no. shut my mouth, but <laughs> I, I know that people will justify anything, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Karen, it's been my pleasure. I'm so happy to have you back, and uh, we, we got to keep doing these. And uh, anytime, Ron, anytime. I'll be, yeah. uh, I'll be cooking up some subjects, and uh, we'll be together. This is a nice. It'd be fabulous. To anyway, have uh, a fellow person who went through it over 40 years, like I did. Yeah, that's we right. Yeah, it, breathed it, and we've survived and flourished and prospered. Yep, and we've walked the walk, and uh, we're not talking about something we read about in a book. 
we actually experienced this. So you're getting the, what do they call it? Fair dinkum? Is that what they say in England? <laughs> the, 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 the skinny, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's an expression. Anyway, listen, this has been Life After Scientology. If you want to see what else I do, go to my website, therealronmiscavage.com. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'd like to get this up to a lot more subscribers who get enlightened with our shows. And if you'd like to help to the ongoingness of it, you can become a Patreon or just in, in a donation. That would be very much appreciated. And I'm going to keep on doing this. And Karen, I'm going to keep on having you back and we'll have some more interesting talks and interesting shows, I'm sure. Love so f- from me to all of you, I say have a wonderful day. Have a healthy life. God bless all of you. Karen, you want to say your goodbye also? Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Y'all come back now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.